Yo, yo, yo. What I do, people? What's going on? Happy Sunday, man. Hope you're, hopefully everybody's got their Java, you know, or your Java substitute, whatever it is. Mm. Phenomenal. Um, we got video gaming news for today, April 7th, and then it'll be day 13 of Dragon's Dogma 2, baby. Uh, good times? Keeping moving with the good times. So, um, PSA, I'll keep uh, pushing out these announcements. No watch party uh, for Fallout because Amazon sucks and removed our capability to do watch parties on Twitch. So, the uh, kind of event that we had planned for months to watch Fallout together here on the, uh, on the platform and the channel together is over uh before it even began thanks thanks amazon thanks twitch appreciate it awesome you guys rock uh slash s um so <clears throat> if you hadn't heard that's that's the thing that we can't do anymore and um also <clears throat> stream will be down the 13th so uh un just under a week so um starting probably like next saturday yeah next saturday um, for roughly close to a week, um, it'll be down. So, uh, I've got a little bit of vacation time coming up. <clears throat> Stream will be down. Be ready for that. Uh, I'm sorry. It's never a fun thing for me to, uh, have the stream be down, but it's, uh, it's for a good cause. Just know that. So on that note, let's go ahead and do what we do, man. Let's get in here and let's get into video gaming news this morning before we dive into playing more Dragon's Dogma 2. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we read about this yesterday. Um, it was a very, it was a very good article. You know, forget making uh, quadruple A games. CD Projekt is making um, quintuple A games, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, everybody has been memeing on uh, Ubisoft with the quadruple A game stuff for uh, a minute now. Ever since they were releasing black flag and they were trying to they're not black flag but skull and bones my bad skull and bones they were releasing skull and bones and uh, eves gilmo uh <clears throat> their ceo was trying to defend the triple a price point on that game calling it a, a quadruple a game you know everybody was was trolling them out about that and, you know their cd project has gotten on board too which is funny it's not like they don't have their own issues that they need to address, though, you know? So. I don't know. Um, CD Projekt is, is much better uh, at, at content than Ubi is, I, I in my opinion. But the state of the release of their games over the past uh, couple of iterations, like Witcher 3... Cyberpunk have been pretty brutal, so maybe they should focus more on making sure that they're uh, got their ship in order before they start trying to troll other companies. Maybe, you know. I do think I've seen a lot from CD Projekt Red as of late that makes me feel like maybe they might be on the right track again. Um, they've always been great with content, but they've they've got some downfalls, especially with the way that they push their games out. The state of the way they, you know, the performance and stuff. They push their games out. unfinished, really. Let's not sugarcoat it. They're really bad at baiting people into uh, buying their games and their games come out unfinished. You know, so um, they've, they've got some work to do um, on cleaning up their own house. You know, so uh, it, feel, it feels a little bit weird to see them troll out another company when they've got their own issues they need to work through. You know? Yeah, this um, this game looks looks really dope. Uh, we looked at it yesterday. What was the name of this? The um, roulette game, Buckshot Roulette. Yeah, um, this has been out for a while on itch, 
And I've seen some things here and there about it. It looks really good. It's definitely inspired by something like Inscription. And it's uh, just got released on Steam. It's got some some other stuff coming and some, some updates headed our way for the game. It's $3 and, and people are already just loving the game uh, that hadn't already played it on itch you know telltale games giving an update on the wolf among us two's status xbox has a new team focused on game preservation really Some Ark Survival Ascended news. Let's take a look at that as well. What do you say? What do you say? never be another video game launch like Halo you can't say that like Halo 3 but well, what are they talking about here yeah I think uh, this is just probably a an article written <clears throat> like I mean you know I'll I'll relate that to my own uh, to me there will no never be another video game release i can't imagine anyways i will never say never <clears throat> i can't imagine another video game release in my eyes the same as final fantasy 7 the original final fantasy 7 you know and i think everybody has their their game that has that special spot for them that release that's just it was just so mind blowing, and and you remember the release, and you remember the hype, and you remember, you know, um, it fulfilling the expectations or exceeding those expectations, you know, of what you were wanting out of that title, and that was my Final Fantasy VII, <clears throat> you know. Some people it was maybe Halo Three, yeah. Um, but to say that there will never be another video game launch like Halo Three, that's a bit of a reach, yeah. Everybody's got a different kind of idea and will have a different experience of, of what their Halo 3 launch is for them, you know. Now, if you want to talk about, like, the business side of the industry and stuff like that, there have been a lot of pretty phenomenal... But, I mean, we've got one headed our way, too, in, in GTA 6 that's probably going to be the biggest ever game release. I'm, I'm expecting it to be. Um, honestly, I'm not planning on playing buying into it <clears throat> i'm uh, kind of waiting to see what rockstar is going to do here I'm, I'm i'm expecting a little bit of some grossness to be honest and and um i'm going to sit back and and wait and see what what's happening with gta 6 first um especially because uh, it won't be on pc and i'm not buying a console to play that game on sorry not happening so um you know but it's still going to be a phenomenal big massive juggernaut of a release and um, if you want to just talk about that side of game releases and how um, incredibly monstrous it could be for the business side of things, then we've got one coming our way in GTA 6. But as far as the the uh, individual respective or subjective take, you know what I mean? Um, everybody's got their their game, I think, or or their games that the releases made a, a huge lasting impression, yeah. Yeah, we have this up. We'll take a look at that. That's uh, good. This is great stuff. How long do you think it would take Nintendo to do something like this? <laughs> <laughs> And how much do you think Nintendo would charge for it? <laughs> 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 
Yeah, this is stupid. This is stupid. Um, we talked about this a few days ago. There are already two uh, Boulder's Gate 3 characters that have been named um, into the top 20 most iconic video game characters of all time. Of all time in video game history, there are two characters from a game that just released in full a year ago that have made that list. I am sorry, dude. All you have to do is take a look at this list, too, and, and you'll realize how weird it is that, like, Laura Croft is number one. No. Yeah, that, that in and of itself tells you that the other things coming down that list is, is weird. What up, Davey? What's going on, buddy? Then, what, uh, Agent 47 from Hitman's number two? You know? And, like... Pikachu is number 12 or something instead of which Pikachu would be way higher than that. Mario would probably really be number one. You know, there's there's a lot of weirdness in there already. And then two characters that have only been in the video gaming industry for a year tops uh, on a full release of a game um, are already in the top 20. Come on, dude. Like that doesn't make sense. It's nobody should be putting any stock into these BAFTA awards for most iconic video game characters. It's it's just too too weird, dude. And the data set for voters was too small. It seems like there was some I don't I don't think they did a good job at <clears throat> preventing like vote bloat. And, um, it, I don't know. It, I think things got skewed there pretty hard. It's, it's really weird. It, the, the results turned out really, really weird. What are you up to today, Davey? What's up, man? Yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> I think that's news in general across well, I mean that's why it's important for us to try and um, discern what is legitimate factual information and what needs to be uh, pointed out as you know things that people shouldn't be putting very much stock into as uh, it seems weird right yeah and I mean this is this is one of the reasons that I don't dive into a whole lot of speculatory based articles and stuff. It's inevitable sometimes, but in large part, I don't dive into a lot of like speculation, a lot of rumor based, non official type news. I try not to because if it's not official, if it's not information that's come out from a um, the company themselves or official like documents or something from that company then it's really not anything that you can wholly trust to be legitimate information you know what i mean and anytime we do dive into any of that kind of information there's there's a reason sometimes but i always always try to tell people you know you should be taking this with a grain of salt because it's not official official stuff like that so i do my best but i mean this is the world we live in too dog you know this is the world we live in with information flow nowadays. And uh, that's why I, you know, try and promote people doing their best to fact check things. Um, I think it's inevitable that we all end up getting duped in some form or fashion by misinformation to some extent day in and day out because there's just so much information flow around us all the time the prominence of the internet you know the you know how fast information flow is as well as the the fact there are so many um outlets out there that are built on misinformation spread primarily right it makes it even harder so it's tough it's tough i think you've just got to learn how to do your best at picking and choosing the right kinds of information, the right kinds of sources to dive into, you know? Yeah. 
which is why I try and also push people towards using like independent news sources. If you're really going to be diving into news, you know, don't use outlets like CNN or Fox or anything like that. Use places like Reuters because Reuters is an independent organization. They're much more likely to not have any kind of agenda to push out as opposed to these organizations like Fox that do in fact have some kind of um, political agenda that they're trying to push on people and they often skew information to get people to believe what they want people to believe. You know, it's proven. And really there are a lot of these news outlets anymore that shouldn't even be called news outlets. You know, it's wild. You just got to be careful. But it's it's just a, the reality of the world we live in, man. It just is. It's unfortunate, but it is. It's just part of it. A SOCOM PS5 game possibly leaked. So, like, here's one right here. Perfect example, right? It's like possibly leaked, right? I mean, it's worth just checking out and seeing what kind of information they have there. But there's always going to be this this possibly leaked is like hinder expectations here. You know what I mean? Because it's nothing official. Wait, what? Fallout fans will be able to watch the first the show's first episode on Twitch. Wait, what? Select Twitch streamers. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh my god. So not, not only did they remove all, all of the, you know, I was talking about this shit. I'm going to do this. I'm just getting more and more pissed off about this. So basically what they've done is, uh, as I was talking about yesterday, they, they removed our ability to be able to do watch parties anymore on this platform. So they're basically crushing all of us smaller streamers. And they are lifting up uh, the ones that they've given huge contracts to, really, is what this comes down to, more than likely. Um, so, as of four days ago, they removed all Twitch streamers' ability to hold watch parties, meaning that anybody for four days ago, for the past, like, four years... Could have held a watch party and let anybody watch Prime videos together that had Prime accounts. And that's what we were going to do for this uh, Fallout show here in the community. And then all of a sudden they took it away. And what I was talking about yesterday is it feels so bad that this has happened. Because Twitch's excuse was um, Twitch and Amazon, because Amazon owns Twitch, right? Was, well, there weren't enough people using it. There weren't enough people using it, so we couldn't devote resources to it anymore. Um, which seems really stupid anyways, because it was already an implementation into the platform. It's not like it was something they were, they were still working on implementing. There might've been a little bit of upkeep to it, but not a lot. And, uh, if it was that rough to keep, you know, devoting resources to the reason why it got so bad, uh, and they felt like they needed to remove it, if at all, is because they keep firing people under Twitch. So they've given out these huge, huge, big, multi million dollar contracts to these uh, big name streamers. Oh, the Secret Lab chair is dope. I'm glad, dude. Big, stupid contracts. And I'm not mad at the, the streamers for getting those contracts. More power to them. But the thing that sucks 
is they've given these huge contracts to uh, a few, uh, you know, a small number of the, of the top streamers on the platform. So <clears throat> they've done that. It didn't pay out. It didn't pan out business-wise for them. So what did they do? They fired a ton of employees, and now they're removing our access as a whole. All of us, other, you know, everybody else that, that streams on Twitch, removing our access to community features like watch parties, right? Um, and now, not only that, but what are they doing? They're going, well, not everybody can do watch parties anymore, but we'll let a select number of streamers uh, show like the first episode of Fallout. And who do you think those streamers are going to be? You know what I mean? Flipping sucks, dude. It's terrible. I'm so pissed. Ooh, Vincent. Vincent's going to be a big part of the third one, I think. Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3 update. Let's go. Shin Megami Tensai 5 Vengeance Game Second Promo Video Streamed. Take a look at that. PlayStation accidentally reveals nostalgic PS1 game will be soon uh, soon be free with PS Plus. We'll see what that is. Big Power World updates planned for this summer. Let's see if we've already touched on most of that or not. Power World's not dead. As much as you might want it to be, buddy. For some weird reason. Just because you hate the indie world. Why? Why do you hate the indie world so much? I've already talked about it. The question is, why aren't you playing it? Survival games are amazing, by the way. Just because you suck at them doesn't mean that those games suck, dude. <laughs> you can't be yucking other people's yum just because you suck. You know what I mean? <laughs> we saw the uh the Batman game canceled Batman game we saw that stuff it was going to be the first game to use the Nemesis system before it got canceled I thought it looked like it could have been decent. But, it, I mean, it, it's definitely old. You know, it looks old. 
Spider-Man 3 will be three hours long, by the way. <laughs> That's a lie. I stream way longer than three hours every day. Well, most days, anyways. We've talked about this, too. Those time zones don't exist. Just because you don't live there doesn't mean they don't exist, dude. Just because you live on the flipping moon, just because you're living in space all the time, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't mean that doesn't mean that people on Earth don't live in 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 you know real time zones, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're just talking about the. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online stuff. We've hit on this. Raspberry Pi 5. Oh, they announced that? Sick, dude. Nice. That's cool. Has that been out? I guess it has been out. Raspberry Pi 5 uh, powered Magic Mirror can play retro games too. That's cool. Yeah, it's been out. Stardew Valley, 1 out of 10. <laughs> you are just in here inciting violence, dude. Baby, get out of him. Baby, get out Let's get on to something else. There we go. Why are you so angry this morning? I can't. I'm soft lock. The developers suck. Excuses? There's no way around it. <laughs> I'm soft lock. I literally cannot finish the game on my save file. And I'm not starting that piece of crap game over, so that means it's done. Reload a previous save and play six to eight hours of gameplay over? No. No. Not with how bad that game is. I've already talked about that. Switch 2 rumors mean the Zelda remasters can't wait much longer. Uh, I think that you're going to be more in store for remakes. In my opinion, that's what Nintendo needs to do. There's so many banger... Uh, old Zelda games that deserve to be remade. And I'm not talking about remaking them to try and replace them. I'm talking about remaking them so that a younger generation of gamers get to experience games that they probably normally wouldn't play, you know? For reals. It'd be super lucrative for them, too. Gonna tuck that string back in that sleeve, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no longer five to six years. Uh, go tell that to Ubisoft with uh, Skull and Bones, dude. And I don't think that's true, actually. I don't think that's true. I think it depends. I, I think it depends. I think games as 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 a whole um, have evolved over time to, especially on the AAA front, be different. Why are you telling me to hush just because I'm telling the truth? <laughs> Go tell that to GTA, dude. Bought the game. It was okay. Got boring. Okay. So, so it wasn't. It, I mean, it was mediocre at best, right? G, how long has GTA 6 been in development, dog? 
Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it, it's it's. <laughs> Let them cook you shit. <laughs> See, you, you you don't like truth. You don't like the truth, Soup. You don't like the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> they're spending that two billion just right. I'm not saying that they're not, they're not gonna be doing a good job. I'm just contradicting what you're saying. That studios aren't are no longer taking five to six years to make games. That's not true. That's not true. I think it depends on the game. <laughs> I did an update there. <laughs> I'll accept that, dude. I'll accept that. Yeah. <laughs> it's flipping Apple. What a garbage company. What? They've erected a statue of Capcom's most mythical character in the hometown of its founder? Is it Mega Man? Chun Li, dude. No way. That's dope. Are they not even going to show it? Yo, that's sick. We're going to read about that. I want a, a, a Chun Li uh, statue, dude. Let's go. What are you doing today, Soup? Besides trying to incite violence in here in chat, dude. <laughs> oh, no. I shouldn't have even asked. God dang it. <laughs> I shouldn't have even asked. That call of dookie, man. <laughs> oh, man. I know I look tired today. I can feel it in my eyes. I slept pretty good, though. That, that headache the other day really, really knocked me down, dude. 10 out of 10 game? No. There's no way, dude. I, I will respect your opinion, but it's hard to argue with something like this. Whenever there are over 8,000 user reviews on Steam at a 3.2 out of 10... I'm going to probably say this game's closer to somewhere between a 3 and a 4 out of 10 than closer to a 10 out of 10. You know what I mean? <laughs> what is this, bro? What is this? I don't need it. Bro, this mission... Yeah, you just sent me a video of the entire length of the mission. The mission's only 15 minutes long. <laughs> the entire campaign's only 15 minutes long, bro. <laughs> you can't tell me they couldn't have done anything better. You know what I mean? It's not, there's no way it's 10 out of 10. No way. How are they going to improve it? Tell me it wouldn't be better to you if Venti wasn't in it. You would think it was better if Venti was in it, right?
Don't lie to me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to me, bro. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, no. Black Ops Gulf War, huh? Nobody cares, dude. I'm just another piece of trash, piece of call of dookie. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Took four years? Brother, it didn't even take him like, what? It didn't even take him 12 months to make Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. How's it going to take him four years to make Modern Warfare 3 uh, Golf War? Call of Duty... Uh, Oh, that's just Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty Informer. So this is Gulf War, Black Ops Gulf War. Let me see this. Yeah, let's, we'll take a look at it, dude. We'll see. Did they, were they really working on it for four years? Is this the one releasing in November? I don't care. Bro, there hasn't been a banger Call of Duty game for un, uh, a long time now. Treyarch's the best. Shut up. <laughs> oh, dude, there hasn't been a banger Call of Duty game for a long time now. And Treyarch's been involved in them for quite some time. Sledgehammer, Treyarch. You know, Raven. <sighs> <laughs> You're crazy, bro. Oh, Jesus, dog. Dragon's Dogma 2 fixes the most criticized issue with a patch. Wait, what? Brother, this patch came out. Yeah, this is old news, dude. We need another patch to fix performance issues. Capcom, what the crap is taking so long? I probably need to try that mod that uh, Alucare brought to our attention. I like this song. All right, let's stick with these, dude. And then let's go play some games. I'm in like super chill mode, dude. I feel like I've got like this fog in my head this morning and I just can't handle. I'm glad soup's making me laugh, which is good. The whole fallout thing right out the gate was really pissing me off. Soup's making me laugh, which is good. <laughs> let's go play some COD. Are you talking about a fishing game or what? Are you talking about splashing around in some, some toilets? <laughs> Stimulate your brain. Yeah, I'm about to with some an actual, you know, good game. Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> it's like it's a BBC News mentality. <laughs> Cod, yeah, codfish. Yeah. <laughs> let's get into this dude let's get into the news new final fantasy 7 remake part 3 update is great news for hardcore fans a new tidbit about final fantasy 7 remake part 3 is great news for the uh, hard for hardcore fans of the series so far two of some of the best games of 2020s have been final fantasy 7 and rebirth the expectation is the next installment whatever it ends up being called will complete the hat trick for square enix uh, a big part of what makes the aforementioned PlayStation exclusives so special is the music of each game. The man responsible for this is series composer Nabuo, Nabuo is that, am I saying that uh, correctly? Uematsu. 
a legendary video game composer. Um, previously and somewhat recently, Uematsu suggested he didn't have any huge projects left in him, prompting Final Fantasy fans to panic, thinking he would not be returning for the next and seemingly final installment in the remake trilogy. That said, recently Uematsu confirmed he will be returning for the next game and once again providing a soundtrack for it. Quoted as being say, uh, as stating uh, it would be his honor to work on the next installment. Mm. Nice. For the, uh, as for when we will get the uh, final entry in the trilogy, there were four years between the first and second part, so perhaps the third part will come in 2028? This is just speculation, though. All right, cool. Well, should have some banger music in it still. That's good. That's good. Can't wait until they all hit PC. <laughs> so they can be experienced uh, in, in uh, greater detail, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, if you're talking 2028, 10 years, that's exactly what I was getting ready to say, Soup. Yeah. If, if you're talking three more years or four more years, 2028 before the uh, next one comes out, then it'll probably be on the next iteration of uh, PlayStation hardware. Yeah. yeah. Um, be waiting 10 years? Nah. <clears throat> But um, I will uh, wait until I, I'm going to play all of these back to back, dude. It's it'll probably take it an entire year of time to play them, <laughs> but I'm going to just play them all back to back to back uh, as soon as they they're all on PC. It's going to take a large chunk of time, but it's going to be fun. We'll probably play Final Fantasy VII um, remake, integrate do a different game just to play something different in between then do rebirth then another little bit of something different in between and then the final entry do it like that just to not make everything too stale with final fantasy stuff but that'll probably be what we do uh shin megami tensei 5 uh vengeance games a second promo video streamed Sega and Atlas began streaming a second promotional video for Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance on Friday. The game was originally slated for release on June 21st for Switch, PS5, and 4, Xbox Series X and S, and 1, and PC via Steam, but will now launch on June 14th, about a week earlier. Updated version will feature a new storyline, locations, demons, and choices. Digital Deluxe Edition includes two sacred, sacred treasure sets, DLC, the Matama Dance of Wealth, Matama Dance of Experience, and Matama Dance of Miracles DLC, and two Demon Subquests. We'll watch it real quick. What is this? What is this? Weathering waves, huh? Yeah, we'll take a look at it, dude. Thanks. Appreciate it. Let's watch this real quick. Thanks, buddy. <sighs> Spicy. Kadishu have been wreaking havoc really all over Tokyo. Could I ask you all to go back to Shinjuku? This At least it was for me. I, I think volume's probably was fine, actually. Their suffering would have ultimately served us much greater. Speak a little, little bit loud. I transferred over here since we'll be working together for a while. I'm here to help you Where's as well. So if you need anything, let me know. I love like um if that demon is not dealt with, she will only leave more casualties in her wake. I agree with the saint. We should pursue. A lot of the like um horror horror creatures and stuff that come out of like 
You shall smite the demons that are Japan and, and like I, I, I like a lot of the the horror creatures that come out of a lot of the Asian cultures and stuff. They're really really I cool. I still want my revenge and my freedom. Why is this happening to her? Why did she have to live in such a goddamn broken world? The salvation of these cursed souls is my duty. A bit of mercy. Even after everything that's happened, you still haven't given up. So congrats! <laughs> I guess you're on the list. Shakan is a sacred space within Bethel. It could also be considered the source of power for the Shekinah glory. So, what is your goal, then? What kind of world are you trying to create? We want it back. We wish to restore Make that, that horse man. world. I never wanted to lose you to get my revenge. Then I really would be alone. We have to keep fighting, or all the sacrifices that brought us here will have meant nothing. I know. I know you've seen how broken this world is. So they've gone to the other side to finish the job. Certainly possible. Now, the time has come for you to prepare the Nahobino for sacrifice. Cool. Cool, man. PlayStation accidentally uh, reveals nostalgic PS1 game will soon be free with PS Plus. Let's see what this is. Um, from 1998. Medieval. Trophies leaked for the game on PSN. Trophy list is identical to the trophy list on the PS of the PS4 remake, but has different artwork for each trophy and hero art featuring the original PS1 logo. Naturally, both of these things suggest it is separate from the PS4 remake. PlayStation has not commented on the leak and the speculation it has created. Um... Garnered an 80 on game rankings back in the day on release. So, not official official yet, but it's a pretty good indicator that's coming everybody's way on PS Plus, okay? Big Power World updates planned for this summer. Let's go, baby. Power World, what a banger of a game. Whatever Soup says, don't listen. He's just a hater, dude. He's been drinking Haterade for years. I think he actually uh, had his bottle filled as a baby with Haterade. He was just drinking Haterade forever, you know? And for some reason, he's got some vendetta against anything that's, you know, a good game. Especially if it's a good indie game. So don't pay no attention to this troll inciting violence in, in our chat, okay? Um, Pocket Pair has confirmed a major content update is coming to Pal World in the next future that could really shake up the game for the better. Um, they've already pushed out some updates that have made a lot of great changes for the game. <coughs> Personally, I uh, I got a really good taste of the game when it went early access. It had its its issues. It had some rough edges. It was early access. I expected that. It's a small developer. It's an indie developer that has produced something fantastic. The core of the game was there. They just need a little bit more bacon time, in my opinion. My uh, sentiments whenever I was finished playing at that point was, um, I don't need to taste more of it right now because I'm going to wait for uh, closer to full release. That would give more bacon time, more content, 
uh, the game to feel more polished and everything. And then I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna play it with community members that wanna play it and get a really, really, really thorough taste of the game on full release, which I think will be better. <clears throat> but it's amazing already. Pal World's upcoming major update promises new pals, bosses, buildings, weapons, and even a whole new island with never before seen scenery currently has a release window of summer of this year. Despite a decline in player count, which is to be expected, Pal World fans are still having fun with the game, creating impressive bases using unique strategies. With how extensive it is, the summer update will likely bring back some players and give the existing audience a reason to keep on playing. This is just the whole you know recipe for how to keep people into a live service game if you're continually adding in content then you know you continue to have people be a part of of what you're doing and, and what you're creating as long as it's it's a world that people enjoy it can get stale if you're not adding content live service games get that way but if you're good at adding in new content keeping things fresh there's a lot of content to dive into and enjoy it can, people will continue to play. Uh, the creators of one of 2024's biggest games, Power World, have shared a promising update on the future of the viral hit. Fans are likely to be excited at the prospects of the content. Roadmap teased for Power World by developer Pocket Pair. <clears throat> yeah. Which we we know a lot of this stuff already. I'm not going to read that. Near the end of the patch notes on update version uh, 0.2.0.6 for Power World, Pocket Pair expresses its intent to release a larger, more content-packed update for summer of 2024. A number of new features are going to be added in this major update, including new pals, bosses, buildings, and weapons. Pocket Pair even plans to add a whole new island to the game later this summer, one that will be filled to the brim with never before, uh, never before scenery. Oh, okay. All of this will be added uh, in addition to the minor bug fixing, quality of life, and raid boss updates that are regular, regularly released for the game. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Smash the speakers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the rest of that was just talking about how people are still enjoying the game, finding uh, different ways to be creative with the base building, things like that. Uh, some of the updates that they have been adding and are continuing to work on uh, for improving, you know, the experience for people in the game and everything. They're doing a good job, and it's an indie developer. You gotta, you gotta applaud it, man. It's, it's really good stuff. And I'm excited to dive back in here at some point. You know, <clears throat> I really am. <laughs> soup soup's just like i don't know no, that's <laughs> i just got i got in before soup could could get all violent with it dude <laughs> they've erected a statue of capcom's most mythical character in the hometown of its founder is chun li capcom's most mythical character chun li has received a statue in the hometown of of the founder of capcom to celebrate the historical importance of the franchise Capcom is famous worldwide for its video games. In particular, if it is currently in mind, it is because of the importance of its fighting games. Among them, none is more important than Street Fighter, a franchise that achieved global success in er as early as its second installment in 1991 and has remained one of the most relevant games in history 33 years later. <clears throat> to celebrate the success of the franchise, they've erected a 70-centimeter statue of Chun-Li in uh, Kashihara, Nara Prefecture, 150 centimeters, including its pedestal. Why was it erected in Kashihara? That is the hometown of Cop Capcom's founder, Kenzo uh, Sujimoto. The choice of Chun-Li is because, in addition to being the most beloved female character in the franchise, she's also the most well-known and distinctive, serving as its unofficial mascot. I don't know, Ryu is way up there too, dude. According to NHK, other activities include displaying Street Fighter-themed manhole covers, a space to display Street Fighter 2 and, uh, and 6 for free, giving away Street Fighter stickers, and even a martial arts exhibition by the local institute. Interesting. Can we find the... Uh, why, why have we not seen like a picture of the... Uh,
Let's see if we can find this. We gotta be careful with these images. <laughs> you know, don't wanna. That's not it. This it? Yeah, it looks like that's it right there. <clears throat> Interesting. Put this right here with the, uh, that works. Cool, man. Wait, what? Am I tripping? I think we're good. All right. Fallout fans will be able to watch this show's first episode on Twitch. I'm not even. <clears throat> this is. Uh... Look at this crap, dude. I'm 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 so tilted right now. I'm so tilted. I'm so pissed. I'm gonna I'm gonna save this for last. Oh my god, I'm so pissed. SOCOM PS5 game possibly leaked. An actor may have just leaked the existence of a new SOCOM game. Back in 2019 and 2020, there were a plethora of rumors that a new SOCOM game was in development for the PS5. For what it's worth, we ourselves had heard a SOCOM project was kicking around the conceptual pre-production stage. This was four or five years ago, though. Either all of the rumors were fake, including what we heard, or the project just never went anywhere, which does happen in game development quite a bit. Whatever the case, the rumors are back, and this time, there's more to chew on than just scuttlebutt. Over in, uh, on actoraccess.com, acting talent... David Veach lists on his resum resume motion capture work for a SOCOM 11, uh, 111 by Sony. According to the resume, he is the co-star of the game, and as Reddit points out, this doesn't appear to be a typo for SOCOM 3. That's a 3. Those are That says 111. It's supposed to be uh, a triple I. So SOCOM 3. I guess if you add these up, it would be 3. But with numbers, it looks like 111. He is not he credited on that game or another SOCOM game. So what the heck is going on? Well, at first glance, it appears uh, Veach has spilled some beans. This is the first we've heard of SOCOM 3. There's no reference of it anywhere on the internet unless this is some bizarre left field error that appears to be a genuine leak. And the fact the work is listed on motion capture suggests it's most likely a video game. You can see it right there, motion capture, SOCOM 3. <laughs> Right now, all we have is this resume, so grain of salt with all of this, but looks like we might have another SOCOM game coming our way. All right. Telltale Games confirms The Wolf Among Us 2 is still in development. It's been nearly five years since The Wolf Among Us 2 was announced, and despite fan worries, Telltale has confirmed it's still in development. So Telltale Games has given a very brief update on The Wolf Among Us 2 and confirmed that it's still in active development at the studio, although fans are still hesitant to get their hopes up too high. The death and resurgence of Telltale Games has been a very long and confusing affair. There was at least one undeniably exciting announcement to come from the studio's return, the announcement of The Wolf Among Us 2. The first Wolf Among Us was one of the most beloved games from Telltale, something that fans have been wanting to see more of ever since 2013. As great as it initially seemed that Big B Wolf was getting another adventure, things have soured a little bit in recent years. Since being announced at the Game Awards in 2019, we've not really heard all that much about the upcoming sequel, which, when combined with Telltale Games suffering layoffs last year, had many fans worried that it had been quietly canceled. They've confirmed it's still in development. Yesterday, IGN pub published a report on the internal struggles of Deck 9, the studio behind Life is Strange, True Colors. Although the report mainly focuses on the many issues that the team faced while making True Colors, it also dives into Deck Nine's relationship with Telltale. For those that don't know, Deck Nine was previously working on a pre-production script for The Wolf Among Us 2, but was pulled from the project due to issues at Telltale. 
In IGN's report, a statement from Telltale Games gives a very brief update on the development status of The Wolf Among Us 2, confirming that it's still in pre-production despite the deafening silence. Quote, The Wolf Among Us 2 remains in, it remains in production internally at Telltale. We value our relationship with Deck 9 and, other, and, and continue to explore ways we can work together. We'll have to wait and see when we get our next look at The Wolf Among Us 2 to see if that's true. For now, we at least know that it's still being worked on and hasn't been canceled. Hopefully it won't be. But, um, you know, they have had a, a, a lot of rough issues during its development process uh, as a studio. Xbox has a new team focused on game preservation and forward compatibility. Yes. This is great. This is great. For those backing Team Green, one of the most diehard defensive points. This is uh, Soup's uh, brand right here, by the way. Soup's got an entire kitchen decked out in uh, Xbox-themed, um, you know, appliances. Toaster, refrigerator, you name it. You, uh, Soup loves Xbox so much. Yeah. Uh, for those backing Team Green, one of the most diehard defensive points to bring up is Xbox's dedication to backwards compatibility and the availability of old games on modern platforms. Recently, news broke revealing that a new team was established at Xbox by Sarah Bond, who was made president of the brand last year to focus on that topic. Hold on. Uh, I think Soup had a... Uh, just a Yeah, Soup had a mistype there. I got you, dog. Don't worry about it. Yeah, mistype right there. Uh, an article published by exclusively by Windows Central stated that the team is dedicated to preserving games and ensuring forward compatibility exists across the Xbox ecosystem, whatever it may evolve to look like. We need to go back. Soup loves Team Green. Soup loves Team Green. Uh, Windows Central exclusively revealed content detailed in a series of internal emails, which focused mainly on briefings issued by Sarah Bond. One key tidbit to take away from the discussion <laughs> was the creation of a fresh team dedicated to future-proof digital game libraries across future hardware paradigms. And a quote taken from Jess Corden's write-up on Windows Central. Quote, we have formed a new team dedicated to game preservation, important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself. We are building on our strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players, and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of Xbox games for future generations of players to enjoy. There are bold plans for Xbox to reach lofty heights in the coming years, with the tech titan working on the biggest technological leap ever in a generation, which was said by Sarah Bond during a recent podcast-based update. However, looking to the future also includes bringing up the past, which is a huge deal for longtime gamers who want all their games, including retro ones, in the same place. Recently, a debate sprung up around the preservation of games, with some avid gamers taking legal matters into their own hands and trying to sue publishers and developers for shutting down live service games. We've seen some projects pulled offline, others canceled before they make it to the market in recent months. But that's part of the ongoing impact of the industry's woes that have been circulating for more than a year and a half. Do you make uh, use of Xbox's powerful backwards compatibility features? I have, you know, commended Xbox. They are the better of the console uh, side of the industry at giving uh, the quality of life of this kind of thing. Backwards compatibility, you know, um, they weren't always this way, but they have definitely made themselves stand uh out from Nintendo and PlayStation as being better to their consumers and their fan base at giving things uh, in in this regard. Backwards compatibility, they're much, much better about this. And to see them um, standing up and doing something like um, focusing on game preservation, forward compatibility as well, you know, this is, this is huge. Forward compatibility? Dude, I have been... Um, you know, harping on the console side of the industry for so long, for so long. There's no reason, absolutely no reason why you should be buying a game on a platform that gets ported into their newer hardware and you have to buy it again. Nintendo is the worst. Nintendo's the worst. Mario Kart 8, you know, they do it on purpose. They do it on purpose because... They've got these games that they know people will love, and they know people will rebuy it. But you shouldn't have to. It's a disgusting mechanic. 
Mario Kart 8 came out on the Wii U. How many people bought that game on the Wii U? And then the Switch came out like a year, year and a half, a year to two years later, right? After Mario Kart 8 had come out. what they do? They ported that game to the Switch. Yeah? And those get that game their games never go down in price either. If you can get them on sale every once in a while, but they they like Mario Kart 8 is still a $60 game. Still. And so it's not like you're ever going to get the the game at a, a, a you know a li- lower price point as time goes on. You you might be able to find a deal on it here and there. But you know, if you bought it on Nintendo, you know, you obviously you're playing it on Nintendo's platform. If you own it, you own it. You shouldn't have to buy it again. It's one of the most disgusting things that we've been getting railroaded by in this industry for quite some time now. And so, you know, the whole forward compatibility thing is is something that we've needed forever. That's one of the reasons that I have been so, you know, high on promoting PC gaming to people for so long now. And I think a lot of people have started to see through the scumminess of console gaming. And uh, for for certain reasons, the quality of life on PC is just there. You don't have to worry about your library not working. You know what I mean? Or or having to rebuy titles for your, your new PC if you upgrade. Right? You just... Go back to the platform that you use, or platforms that you use, whatever they may be, and you download your games again, you install your games again, you play them. Which is the way it should be for every console manufacturer as well. But it's not like that. They've been railroading people forever. And it's it's disgusting. Xbox has been better, and they're on the right track. They really are. And PlayStation and, and Nintendo need to take note. Ark Survival Ascended confirms the center release date and next dino. The center release date is set for the next Ark Survival Ascended map, and the giant biome will be joined by new dinosaur, the Shantasaurus. With Ark Survival Ascended Scorched Earth DLC now finally up and running, the d- divisive uh, UE5 remaster of the Dinosaur Survival game is preparing for the arrival of its next map. Uh, the center release date was already pushed back from its initial planned launch in February by developer Studio Wildcard to make sure it meets our expectations and yours. Now, however, that was a quote, right? Now, however, the team confirms that we'll see the giant, gorgeous biome realized in the remaster at the start of June, alongside the arrival of another majestic new creature. The Ark Survival Ascended remaster continues to split opinion with a mixed Steam user rating of 58% positive reviews, boasting an impressive overhaul, but one that struggles from performance and optimization issues and the need to repurchase the game if you own the original Survival Evolved. Good news is that the survival game has just made its way onto Microsoft's PC Game Pass, so there's now another option to check out the new version. The center is perhaps one of the coolest environments in Ark, a vast, diverse biome double the size of the island that Studio Wildcard describes as Tolkien fantasy in design. Originally created as a custom map by community modder Ben Burkhart, known as Evil Mr. Frank, it was later adapted into an official map and includes a range of different climates from swamps, jungles, and tropics to mountains, ice caverns, volcanoes, even a giant floating island. You can see its original survival evolved form in action in the official trailer below. Let's take a look at it.
Zowie. Suffice to say that its arrival in uh, Survival of Senate is much anticipated. It's understandable the studio wildcard decided to take the extra time to ensure it reaches its full potential. Also al arriving alongside the center is the seventh winner of the art creature vote, the aquatic Gastasaurus. Center arrives in Ark Survival Ascended on Monday, June 3rd, on top of the UE5 revamp. Developer promises tons of new surprises to uncover, adds that even more exciting developments are cooking for the June 3rd update alongside the center and the introduction of the Shantasaurus. It's a giant well. As mentioned up top, uh, Ark Survival Ascended is now on Game Pass. Likely to be very welcome news for some, as one of the hardest pills to swallow about the remaster was its price tag, given that many players had already invested in the original version. Yep. Now, if you're a subscriber to uh, Microsoft Service, you'll be able to play the remaster there, which also includes the recent Scorched Earth expansion. Yep. Also, an Ark Survival Ascended free Steam weekend ongoing until Monday, April 8th. So, if you'd rather buy a copy to keep, it's also 20% off until on Steam until Thursday, April 11th. You'll pay um, $36 US instead of the... So, it's roughly like $9 off right now. There you go. Modern Warfare 3 Informer says, here's everything we know about Black Ops Gulf War. Is this going to be the new one coming out in November, dude? <laughs> Reveal in June. Release October. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I guess I just answered that. Round-based zombies. So they're built like me? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Different kind of round-based. <laughs> Return of Verdansk with Warzone integration. <laughs> Fat bottom zombies make make the Call of Duty world go round, dude. <laughs> What's up, Sai? Uh, had four years of development. Well, we'll see what people think. Thanks, Soup. Appreciate it, man. We'll see, we'll see. Um... Wuthering, what's going on, Psych? Happy Sunday, buddy. Whoa! That stretch in, peoples. Oh, dude. Get ready. This last article coming up after this one's. Uh, I'm about to go on a flippant rant. I'm pissed. Cooking? I'm about to cook. Get ready for it. I'm about to cook, too, dog. I think a different kind of cook, but, you know, get ready. Wuthering waves hands on CD's uh, GDC preview. Another open world ARPG with a very strong hook. So, um, not this one, but the next one. So, get ready for it. Wuthering waves might have uh, some familiar looking features, but it's the elements that set it apart that have potential to make an impact. What do you cook inside? What are you cooking on, mate? Uh, summary Wuthering waves combat system is innovative, strategic, and engaging, featuring a unique ecosystem. The boss design is rewarding, striking a good balance between challenge and fun. Open world exploration and Wuthering Waves feels complete, smooth, and offers engaging puzzles. Um, Wuthering Waves is the latest effort from developer Kuro Games. Action RPG gotcha title set to release for iOS, Android, PC, and PlayStation borrows heavily from already popular titles within the same space. Most obviously Genshin Impact will inevitably draw numerous comparisons to... Certainly not a bad place to start, however, and what Withering Waves innovates is more than enough to separate it as a game worth watching as it moves closer to a global release following another round of closed beta tests. <coughs> Excuse me. Withering Waves combat is its biggest draw. Snappy, stylish action and character design still is show. There's a lot of games hitting like this now, uh, where obviously Genshin's been out for quite some time now. It, it set itself apart from the traditional mobile games into something that was multi-platform and mobile, you know, and it was cross-platform and cross-play and everything. And, and uh, now we've got like a lot of these titles trying to emulate what Genshin did so well, right? Um, some from the same developer as like MiHoYo, yeah, or the HoYoVerse. 
Um, and we've got uh, Zenless Zone Zero coming, um, you know, from them. And, and now we've got uh, this coming as well. So there are a lot of these games being kind of just emulating that same thing that, that Genshin has done very well. And it's been very, very lucrative for them with Genshin, right? Um, Withering Waves employs a three-unit combat system with a design focused on swapping between them at beneficial times during battle to maximize their synergies. It's not groundbreaking, but the implementation is excellent. Slowly building up a charge bar while using abilities and properly timing dodges allows players to then swap into a new unit that has an immediate effect upon entering the battlefield. We didn't get a chance to really examine what those abilities are, but they seem to range from doing damage, setting up better positioning for a new skill input. Combat feels snappy and responsive in Withering Waves with well-made character movement and a crucial element of the flow of battle. Dodges felt especially pinpoint and rewarding. Combat also fe uh, features a parry system where a unit can time their attack to respond to an enemy's vulnerability indicator during their own lunge. Doing so results in damage and a stagger that can set up the next chain of a combo. The hands-on was a little too short to really go in depth on these systems, so it's difficult to ascertain exactly how the interplay between dodging, parrying, and swapping units really flows, but what was on display felt intuitive and fun. Boss design also feels like it will be a rewarding element of Withering Waves. We got to try a few different difficulty levels, and while the first one was fairly easy, only requiring a few well-timed dodges to set up br brutally efficient combos. The very next difficulty element resulted in a team wipe after an ill-timed party member swap. Refreshing to have combat in this game that feels sufficiently challenging without being completely over the top. Early impressions make it feel like Kuro Games has managed to strike that elusive balance. So the last innovation in combat is the Echo System, which is sort of a blend between traditional equipment-based abilities and a creature-collecting game. Players can collect the Echoes of enemies they defeat in the game, then equip them to a character, one per unit, which in turn provides stat bonuses and the ability to transform into that Echo during a battle to briefly call upon their abilities. We defeated a boss, equipped their Echo, and then used it in the next battle to get to great effect. Also pretty cool to occupy the body of an enemy that was fun to fight just minutes before. That's neat. <laughs> Uh, exploration borrows heavily, feels complete. Yeah, you can see the glider stuff. I mean, it looks Genshin, dude. It looks Genshin, right? Grappling hooks, gliders, sprinting were all options. Uh, a parkour system lets characters run up walls, cliff sides. <laughs> Random up. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Get your animos in there, people. Either Peepo Hey. Or fly. You get a free Subaruski. A game full of potential, they say. So we'll just summarize this. Even during the brief hands-on, and I'll look at some of the pictures in a moment. Even during the brief hands-on and during conversation with Kuro, games representative present during the hands-on, it became clear that Withering Waves has big plans for launch. There's a wide array of content immediately available. When I asked about post-launch plans, there wasn't a concrete answer, but an obvious indication it's something that's already a consideration. There's also the fact the team has been so readily willing to listen to player feedback. A lot of improved elements present in this hands-on, and the second closed beta are a direct result of players' complaints from the first round of testing with some pretty drastic redesigns already made in response that's an encouraging sign for a fledging fledgling live service game that has to compete for time with well-established titles in the same space optimistic weathering waves can entice players early enough variation in its game world it's compelling combat systems it's another open world rpg with an exciting hook the launch will certainly be make or break time for the game Overall, the hands-on experience with the game definitely uh, cements the fact that Weathering Waves is a game to watch and an exciting design within the action RPG gotcha ecosystem. Interesting. We've got a number of games coming out on the same kind of premise and concept and, you know, this same genre. Um, it looks very Genshin, right? Hmm. Cool. Thanks, Soup. Appreciate it, buddy. Yo, Super Donut, what's up, my friend? How you doing? Eight row, what it do, bruh? Get your random boats in there, people. Get your random moats in. Try to get a free sub. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm about to rant. Get ready for it. I'm about to rant. I'm I'm pissed. Let's finish that last drop of coffee before we hop into this, okay? 
So, um, a couple of days ago, we found out that um, <laughs> Twitch just recently on the 3rd of April removed our ability to have watch parties. And um, uh, the, one of the reasons that feels so terribly bad is not only, you know, is it bad timing for us as a community because we were preparing to watch the Fallout series together, right? We were going to watch that together on the 11th and 12th uh, before I took off on vacation. It was something fun for us to be able to do together for anybody else that had Prime. We were going to do a watch party. We were going to watch Fallout together. It was going to be uh, it's some, it's something we had planned since the beginning of the year. We made our schedule together, right? Um, it's off the schedule now. I already adjusted it, but exclamation point schedule brings up our Google doc for the schedule that we make at the beginning of every year for all the games we're going to play, stuff like that. Um, and, uh, that was on our schedule has been since the beginning of the year. And, uh, it's no longer something that is, uh, applicable because Twitch removed our ability as streamers to have watch parties, um, Twitch and Amazon. Amazon being the uh, owner of Twitch, uh, right? So their excuse was initially that they didn't um, have, they weren't seeing enough people utilize watch parties on Twitch to justify allocating their resources towards, um, you know, supporting that integration on the platform. I have a really hard time and I'm not, I'm not internal to that process. I don't know how many resources they were having to allocate towards maintaining watch parties as a part of the integration on the platform for us as streamers, you know, um, and content creators. But what I'll say is it's been a part of the platform for roughly four years now, I think something like that. Um, and it, it's been there. I don't know what you know, other than a little bit of upkeep here and there, right? A little bit of upkeep here and there. Um, I don't know wh what kinds of significant resources they were having to allocate towards keeping an, a, a mechanic, a, a, an incorporation for the platform that was already implemented a long time ago. It seems weird. Um, it seems like an excuse more than anything, right? Um, the other side of it is if they didn't have the resources... It's because they have been crushing their employee base at Twitch. If you haven't noticed, they've been firing mass amounts of employees over the past year and a half um, to where they are running, uh, you know, basically, I think about a third of the amount of employees that uh, they had had roughly two years ago. So their employee base is severely um, down from what it used to be. And... I'm sorry, but I can't help but think that uh, a large part of why this has happened is because, you know, Twitch has been doling out um, massive, massive contracts to a small number of large content creators on their platform over the past few years, you know, three to five years, right? And uh, yeah, that's what I just said, super, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll talk about that in a second too. Okay. So uh, I'll talk about that in a second. I've, I've already discussed that before and I'll talk about that. Yes, there are absolutely copyright concerns. Um, so we'll, we'll discuss why there's not a way for us to get this done on another platform or anything either. And it's because of that. It's because of that. But yeah, thanks. Super. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so it, it's uh, and Look, more power to the other content creators, those big content creators that got these big lucrative lucrative contracts and everything to stay on Twitch. I'm not angry at them. You know, more power to them, right? More power to them. Um, but Twitch, like a lot of the other, I think, businesses in the tech industry and in the video gaming industry as of late have made some poor business decisions. And who suffers the consequences? You know, it's... Um, their low to mid-level employees get fired. They want to act like it's just, oh, well, you know, business is bad. Well, business is bad because you've made poor business decisions. And as long as, you know, what they want to do is make sure that their stakeholders and their executives keep having fat pockets lined with gold, you know, 
then they'll do what they need to do to make sure that happens, right? Which means crushing two thirds of their employee base. I think I need to go back and look at numbers, but I think it's close to that. It's been a lot over the past two years that they've fired out of Twitch and um, they they've removed another functionality of us being able to interact and have something fun to do with our communities and it sucks and now what we find out this morning is that there are certain content creators big content creators who are getting to stream the first episode of the show on twitch amazon's giving them access so here we go again crushing small content creators so that big content creators many of whom probably got those big contracts by Amazon from Amazon and from Twitch and again I'm not mad at these content creators I'm happy that they've been able to you know find a way to to uh you know become very lucrative on the platform and everything it's not their fault but it sucks that the rest of us because look it's a very small percentage of streamers at the top of this platform that have have found a way to to become very lucrative right the rest of us are are you know are not close to that level and we do this because we love it and we do it because we love our communities and we do it because we're passionate about it and then they crush us and keep taking away functionality and and things like that it feels terrible man it feels terrible and then not only was it bad in the first place they were taking away watch parties but now they're going to slap us in the face and say well we're taking away watch parties but but if anybody wants to watch the first episode you can go watch it on big content creators so once again slapping all the smaller content creators in the face uh with this next thing they're doing by saying well if you want to watch the first episode you know, you can just go to a bigger content creator's uh, channel and do that. It feels terrible. It, it sucks for all of us on this platform. Um, so, now that I've got my rant out of the way, Fallout fans will be able to watch the show's first episode on Twitch. Select Twitch streamers will, will be able to share Fallout's first episode live again because they removed our access to hold watch parties right before this series released prime videos fallout adaptation premiere is approaching with a franchise this beloved with such a passionate following it makes sense the streaming platform wants as many people to see the premiere episode to get hooked and to want to check out the rest of the season in order to help grow the number of people with access to the premiere, Prime Video has partnered with Twitch streamers to share the experience after eliminating everybody else's ability to hold a watch party for it. After all, the wasteland is dangerous to explore for a lone wanderer. On Thursday, April 11th, the same day all eight episodes will be available to watch on Prime Video, some select Twitch streamers will be sharing the first episode live. The list of streamers includes... Shroud, Brooke AB, The Only Ryan, Deer, Co Carnage, King Goliathan, uh, The Bronze Girl, Dance Gaming, Sweet Trails, Elspeth, Technique, Swifter, Gassy Mexican, Tuniversal, and Bloody Faster. Twitch shared the news of the live streams on X initially with a graphic featuring the iconic thumbs up from Vault Boy. Notably, the watch party feature was removed from Twitch, like I just discussed, very recently, April 2nd. So it appears going forward, the ability to host live stream party watch parties will be part of exclusive events. For who? The bigger streamers on the platform. The bigger streamers on the platform, you know? Sure. So again, once again, here we are. Big streamers win. Everybody else on the platform, which is the majority of the platform, getting crushed. And it I don't necessarily, you know, what it sucks for me, the reason it sucks for me is because of not being able to do this with my community, my friends. You know what I mean? We had this planned for months, dude. 
you know why I won't probably ever be a bigger uh, streamer on this platform is because of the way that I address this kind of stuff. I don't, even if I got bigger, I wouldn't change my mindset. This is the problem for me, right? The same way that I address the gaming industry is the same way that I would address this situation too. You know, I would, I would be looking at this as this is terrible for all the small streamers on the platform. This isn't good for us as a whole, right? As far as I would see it, we are us as content creators on this platform. And it's not good if it's not good for everybody, right? And so I would be outspoken against this even if I was a bigger content creator, which is why they want they don't want me to be big, dude. Just like the gaming industry doesn't want me to get notoriety either because I'm always calling out their bull crap. You know what I mean? Um but a lot of these other bigger ones don't look at it like that. They don't care about that. They got theirs. Just like so many other people in this world, they got theirs. They don't care about anybody else. You know what I mean? That's what sucks about it. There's not enough people standing up for like the little man, if you will, you know? And the reason it sucks for me is because it sucks for you guys. It sucks for us. This community is about us. It's us, right? It's not just me. It's us. You guys are my friends. This is an awesome community of awesome people. And um, I want this to always be a place that's about us, not just me. And um, we had this plan for a long time. And that's why I'm so pissed off about it. And then this is just like a cherry on top of them just like slapping us in the face, man. It feels terrible. I'm super hot, dude, obviously. You know what I mean? I don't even know why I'm surprised about it, you know, with as much crap like this happens in the world all the time of, you know, people with power and money crushing the little guy or whatever. Um, it feels like there are so few people standing up for, you know, trying to level the playing field, if you will. Um, I don't even know why I'm surprised. I'm, I shouldn't be. But I'm pissed. I was angry enough at the fact that they just like, you know, and I was like, even saying previously, like how convenient, you know, how convenient that they remove the, the ability to watch party of this right before, like uh, two days ago, I was talking about this. How convenient. They removed the watch party ability right before Fallout releases. And now this makes a lot more sense why. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pisses me off so bad. Um, so yeah, so Bezos, Bezos needs money to, to, uh, to take his weird looking spaceship places. Unlucky. I don't know why. So I don't get it either, dude. I don't get it. There's so many people with, you know, actually it's so few people with so much money that are so greedy, dude. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. There's so few people in the world with so much money and that, you know, they don't need, they don't need even close to that amount of money. And there's so many people in the world struggling, dog. You know? Struggling. And don't get me wrong. There are people that deserve to be helped out. You know what I mean? That There are people that work their butts off. That are great people. That deserve more. You know what I mean? In life as a whole. Uh, and then there are people that that don't necessarily deserve it because they don't, they're not great people. They're, they're lazy. They don't work for it. You know, it's hard to discern that, but the fact of the matter is not any different that there are people out there with so much money that they just don't need, you know, that's the world we live in though. Uh, would there be any copyright concerns? So that's one of the first things whenever, 
a couple of days ago, whenever this this news came out, that they they removed watch party stuff. Um, the one of the first things that was brought up was, well, we could just watch party in Discord, and and you could, but I can't stream it, right? And it's exactly because of what Super Donuts talking about there, right? So um, the reason that I would be able to stream it as a watch party previously is because the only people that would be able to attend the watch party, and I've I was putting this out as a disclaimer of the entire time we were planning on watching this. The only way that you can attend a watch party on Twitch or could, now that that's no longer an option, was if you were also a, a an Amazon Prime subscriber, an Amazon Prime member. Because that meant that you also had access to Prime video content. So if I ho hosted a watch party, right, because I have Amazon Prime, it's attached to my Twitch account. You have Amazon Prime, and it's you have that attached to your Twitch account. That means that you could watch that video if you want it on your own. So if I'm hosting a watch party for an Amazon Prime video, then you can attend and watch because they know that you could watch it on your own if you wanted to anyways, right? But anybody that didn't have Prime wouldn't be able to attend, right? Because that would mean they would be able to watch something that they're not paying for right so that's why streaming it through doing a watch party through something like discord something like that now streaming it would give all those people access to it that they're not paying for it and i would get dmca'd to death i would get copyright violations to like i would just get wrecked you know there's no way i could do it uh you i got Got one of the bigger streamers on the platform with them about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's a rat race, dude. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and look, I mean, I've always said this. I, I you know, if if I was at the at the forefront of, of what I cared about, if if what I really cared about in doing this was becoming famous and wealthy, then. I wouldn't have been as worried about building this community in the way that I have, right? Or the way that we have. I mean, I set the foundation for it. You guys are the ones that make it happen, right? It wouldn't be about what it's about, really. There are different ways to go about building communities that can be, you know, more lucrative. It can be about, you know, easier to, to build viewers and stuff. It's not what it was ever about for me. For me, this is about a long-term thing it's about legitimate relationships i consider you guys my friends you know i care about you guys that's what this has always been about it's about been about us having a substantial place for each other for the long haul you know um start a streaming site where it's only pirated stream we only pirate amazon stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, bro, let's go. Yeah, that'll teach them. <laughs> so I mean, I, I honestly, I don't, I don't care to be famous. Uh, it's not something that really appeals to me. If I was, uh, you know, of of a position of wealth, a lot of what I would do with my money is be try to give back. You know, obviously, I, I think, I think that anybody that comes across wealth, it. It's always going to be nice to, to be more comfortable. You know what I mean? But I think that in large part, you know, I have I didn't grow up with a lot of money. I didn't grow up with a lot of money. And, and as I've been an adult, I've also found a lot of ways in which, you know, we've sacrificed a lot for me to just be able to do this, you know, every single day. And, and um, I'm not a real wantful person. My wife's not a real wantful person. We have, we've always felt like we've had more than we needed, you know, and, and, um, it, it, we're very fortunate in that fact. So if we became like wealthy, I don't think that that would necessarily change us a whole lot, you know, um, aside from maybe being a little bit more comfortable in life, but also trying to give back more than we, I mean, we, we, we currently, we do a lot of donating. We do a lot of you know, trying to give to less fortunate people and stuff like that. And I think that there needs to be more of that, you know, 
philanthropy and, and things of that nature. And, and uh, I would do more things in the community. I would try to help more people in the community. I would do more giveaways. I would do cooler stuff for the anniversaries, you know, like have a land party set up and try to get more people out to, to hang out together in person for a weekend or something. You know what I mean? But it's weird. It's a weird thing to see, you know, so much greed. It's really what it is, right? There's just so much greed in the world. It feels really gross. I don't know. I don't know why so many people are like so many, so many, so many greedy people in the world. It feels really weird. Um, I don't even know, dude. I have no idea. I, I'm not a pirater. You know what I mean? Besides that booty, you know? Arr. <laughs> <laughs> gotta loot that booty you know what i'm saying but uh i have uh, not really i have no idea dude no idea no clue man um sorry for the rant dude but i mean i can't tell you how much it, you know i was already obviously just really really pissed off by the fact that they they did that to us uh and i was really looking forward to watching this with you guys and and now it's obvious that you know they're just once again doing things to you know lift up people that don't even need to be lifted up you know and they're they're crushing all of the small small people on the platform man the smaller people on the platform and it sucks man and it really the thing that sucks the most about it for me is that you know they removed a, a, something that i was really really looking forward to doing with you guys We'll find, I'll find something else for us to do at some point. It's just, it's real short notice right now. So I won't have anything planned for, um, to replace the, uh, the watch party with because I'm, I'm heading out on a vacation, um, you know, with the wife and kids right before, uh, uh or on the 13th. So, uh, but I'll find, I'll figure something out for us. Okay. We do have the, uh, the anniversary stream right around the corner and stuff and, I don't like getting uh, angry. I don't like getting riled up and stuff. I know I rant uh, quite often, but this one got me really, really upset. So I apologize for getting a bit, you know, heated there. I apologize, but it makes me upset <clears throat> for us, really, is what it is. <laughs> Call out big streamers, feed on drama, start religion, cause holy war, conquer all streaming platforms. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna become a, a pastafarian, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wear a a, a colander every day while I stream. <laughs> Thanks, psych. Yeah, yeah. I just I appreciate you guys, dude. And I I uh, you know I really cherish what we have here, and and uh, this is you know this is like my safe space. You know what I mean? This is like. Um, uh, I mean, also my, my, my home and with my family and everything is too, but this is a very therapeutic thing for me. You guys make this uh, an incredible thing for me to do every day. And, and I just always want, uh, us to have cool stuff to do together and to have a great time together. And it pisses me off whenever the powers that be try and ruin that, you know, and, um, I'll probably like clip that video out and throw it on Twitter and call out a bunch, you know, call out Twitch, call out Amazon. You know, I don't give a crap. You guys know how I am, you know. Um, I, I really don't feel like there's enough people uh, standing up for. I'll probably put some of those streamers in there too. I don't care. I really don't give a crap. You know. I'm not about drama, dude. I'm really not. I'm not about drama. I don't like drama. I flipping hate drama, actually. I hate it, dude. I like to be upbeat. I like to be, you know, I'm, I'm pretty chill and stuff. I don't, I'm not a big drama fan, dude. It, it's probably one of the reasons that, you know, I'm not as uh, sought after as a, a streamer and stuff. I like to be chill. I like good vibes. I don't like drama and stuff, you know. But, um, you know, I do think some of these bigger streamers need to realize how this feels to uh, some of us smaller streamers for sure. <laughs> yeah dude yeah yeah no doubt no doubt but i'm probably gonna cut that out i'm gonna highlight that and i'm probably gonna link it into my my twitter feed i don't do a lot of tweeting either i mean again i'm not a drama fan so you know, i don't i don't spend time on twitter but i'm probably gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna post something out probably with that and be like yo this is some crap you know you guys need to realize what's going on here this is this sucks for all of us smaller people you know 
sucks. Sucks for us and sucks for our communities. But on that note, dude, I'll try to I'll try to be a bit more upbeat. I'll try to get that out of my head until I'm done with streaming for the day, dude. So I'm not dwelling on it and ruining the uh, the vibe in the community, dude. You guys rock, dude. I appreciate you. Thanks for listening to me rant and, and uh, you know get kind of heated there for a second. But it was a good news segment. It really was. Um, as always, I appreciate it. We're going to go play Dragon's Dogma 2, day 13, I think. Are we day 13 right now? Let me see. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's it. So day 13, man, is about to pop off. We're going to keep, um... <laughs> it, we shouldn't feel like that, though. That's, that's what sucks. We shouldn't feel like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. You can't. Don't give up, Super Donut. Don't give up, dude. You know, we got to fight. We got to fight, dude. A little bit. Don't give up. <laughs> We're going to keep playing the uh, Magic Archer, dude. Keep playing Magic Archer. And, uh, and, um, is that what it is in your contract? <laughs> Yo. I did, I did. I don't think I signed that one, dude. So I guess I'll fight for both of us, dog. <laughs> I got you, dude. I'll fight for you. Um, so we're gonna have a good day playing games, dude. Um, again, appreciate the uh, the con contributions to the news segment, even if you were just here and and hanging out and and being a part of the content. But um, shout out to Soup. Soup gave me some nice articles this morning. Appreciate it, buddy. And uh, some nice, uh, some nice trolling too, <laughs> which is always, always fun. Um, so I don't know if anybody's been hanging out this morning. You're, you're uh, maybe lurking about. You're not familiar with what we do all the time, or, or uh, you're seeing this as a vod even later on, um, and you're not all that familiar. We start at roughly 6 a.m. CST CDT. That is 7 a.m. Eastern or 4 a.m. Pacific. That's six days a week, every day but Wednesday, even though I do have some extended off time coming up for a vacation. Um, normally, it's six days a week. We always start with video gaming news. We try to stay current with what's happening in the industry. That's what we all are passionate about around here, video games. And we want to stay current with what's happening in uh, the industry as a whole, promote a healthier industry for ourselves as as gaming, gaming enthusiasts and consumers of these products and, and maybe call out some of the uh, more disgusting corporations in the industry, you know. Um, other than that, uh, we move on after we finish the news like we're about to do right now and we go play games for the rest of the day. We have a good time, man. It's about spreading good vibes and, and just enjoying each other's company. Um, always creating and, and cultivating a wel welcoming atmosphere for anybody that wants to be here. Trying to... Uh, be void of negativity, toxicity, and just have a great time uh, enjoying the world that we all love, man. So if you can dig that, come be a part of it when we're live. We, uh, we're we always looking for more people to spread the good vibes. And if you're a good good person and, and uh, you dig this kind of content, then you probably belong here, man. So uh, other than that, I would say stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. I hope everybody's weekend's going very well. We will do more video gaming news tomorrow morning uh, for Monday's edition, uh, April 8th, Monday edition of video gaming news. But in, before that, we're going to play games, man. So I'm going to run us an outro just to sum up the news segment. Um, it'll be very quick here. I'm not going anywhere. The stream's not going down. As soon as it's over, I'll be right back up here and we'll start playing some more Dragon's Dogma 2, okay? You guys rock. I'll be right back.